Hey everybody, my name is Attila Toth. I'm a developer advocate at Timescale. And in this video, I'm going to show you four different examples of time series data. And additionally, I'm also going to show you concrete SQL query samples for each time series data example. So you will have a better idea how people work with time series data in the mentioned sectors. And what are those sectors? Um, in uh, today's video, I plan to include four examples, finance, blockchain, uh, sensor or sensor data, and the sports. Each example will showcase where you can find time series data and how it can be used in that specific field. Uh, by the way, before we start, if you want to learn more about the nature of time series data and how it differs from other types of data, uh, I'd highly recommend checking out the link in the description. We have a video just about that uh, on our channel. All right, so first uh, let's look at a finance example. So this is a candlestick chart and uh, it's, it's a commonly used uh, chart type in finance to track the price movements of an asset over time. And this is, a, this is a, a perfect example of time series data because it shows how the asset's price has been changing over time. And each, each bar represents four values. One value is the opening price. The second value is the closing price. And then it also shows the high and the low prices for that given time period. And this kind of analysis is really useful for people who work in finance because it, it can, this kind of chart can reveal important patterns and uh, price trends for the given a set and also as i mentioned it's a perfect example of time series data now if you if we want to see what the sql side of this chart would look like to generate uh the, the previously shown candlestick chart you need time series data you need finance data and uh, once you have that maybe because you get it from a financial data provider, you can use SQL and then you obviously you store it in a time series database like TimescaleDB. You can use SQL to extract the data and aggregate it to create the candlestick values to create the open high low close volume. Now, what I want to highlight in this specific example is the usage of uh, timescale db specific functions, what we call hyper functions. In this example, we use the candlestick egg hyper function. If you want to learn more about it, uh, you can find a link in the description, but it basically makes it easy for you to calculate the candlestick values, the open high low close values within SQL without any complicated SQL uh, logic. It's just a function. You need to create the candlestick egg and then use um, one of the functions like open high low close to to get the, the specific volume and then based on this data you can create candlestick charts all right so that was our first first example let's move on to uh blockchains there's a lot of time series data involved in fact uh, each blockchain technically is just a time series database and uh, to give you an example this chart shows you first of all it's about bitcoin it's about the bitcoin network and it shows the bitcoin miner fees and block rewards over time as well as the ratio um, so this chart can help you understand sort of the economics of uh, bitcoin mining and the factors that influence miner revenue and so in order for you to analyze things like this you need to store uh, Bitcoin transactions uh, or at least the transactions that involved uh, minor fees and, uh, and then analyze data with a focus on time. Now, uh, here's another example from the block blockchain space. Uh, and this uh, example is actually the, the gas prices on the Ethereum network. In Ethereum, gas prices are essential to uh, for the network to function properly. And so this chart can help you understand how these prices fluctuate over time and what factors uh, influence the gas prices. And this is all time series data. Again, you can use SQL queries to extract data from uh, your time series database. And then uh, you can create those, those charts to gain insights into how the blockchain operates and how it works. In this query example, you can see how you could aggregate uh, row blockchain transactions. This snippet is from our tutorial that shows you how to analyze the Bitcoin network. We will link the uh, tutorial in the description if you are interested in that. But it shows you, um, for example, 
how to calculate things like the uh, the uh, average uh, uh, transaction size or the average transaction weight uh, or even the um, transaction fees uh, over time and uh, ob and of course the the number of transactions in a, in a given time period furthermore this query also gives you uh, some information about the number of transactions where the fee uh, was actually higher than the value that was included in the transaction. So you can find interesting uh, stats like this using time series uh, data. Now uh, let's, uh, let's continue with uh, sensor data. And uh, when it comes to sensor data, obviously uh, you need to have a sensor uh, or sensors in order to capture data. This use case comes useful in uh, manufacturing or in, in different factories where they monitor machinery. As an example, uh, we monitor the temperature inside the room and the temperature outside. And uh, this is also a classic use case for time series data as it helps you understand uh, for example, in this case, how temperature is changing over time so you can take action if, for example, the temperature is too high or too low. Another example in this category can be the uh, vibration level of some machine in a factory uh, over time. Uh, this can be an important metric um, for uh, things like monitoring the health of the machine and it can help you identify potential issues with the machine before they before it become uh, a major uh, problem. So to generate these charts, uh, again, these are all time charts. Uh, you need to use sensors to capture the, the temperature, to capture the, the vibration data, but then you can use SQL to, to query the data and then maybe you can use Grafana or some other data visualization tool to create the charts and create maybe a dashboard. And this kind of data can help you understand the performance of the, of the machine that the sensors are attached to and you can make informed decisions about things like maintenance and repairs um, so you can potentially save a lot of uh, uh, money when it comes to uh, things like maintenance. Uh, and finally let's explore a really fun uh, example, a sports example that includes uh, American football data. Um, so this uh, image is, um, is a, it's a computer generated uh, American football field. Um, it was used. It was generated using a, a Python library called Matplotlib, and uh, each dot represents the position of a player, an American football player, at the beginning of the play. Now, at this stage, this doesn't really look like it's time series data, or if or if there is any time series data involved. But if we take it a step further, uh, how the players were moving on the field during the play. It might be easier to see that this is also a perfect example of time series data because of the movement and monitoring their positions over time. And so this kind of data can uh, you know, help you analyze the performance of players, uh, teams, and generally it can help you better understand what, what is happening on the field during a play. The data set is actually available on Kaggle. It's a public data set published by the, um, by the NFL. So you, if you're interested in sports and data, uh, we put a link in the description so you can try it yourself. We also worked on a tutorial that shows you how to ingest this data and then use Timescale DB to, to analyze it with SQL. Uh, this snippet is actually from that tutorial as well. But for example, this query returns the average yards uh, run for a player over a game. But we show you a lot of other different examples in that tutorial to calculate fun statistics about players, about teams. So it, it's actually quite fun if you are into sports. And uh, one uh, interesting time scale be function that I actually want to highlight here in this specific query example is the percentile egg uh, hyper function, which is used to calculate, in this case, it's used to calculate the mean, uh, aka the average yard. You can also use the percentile egg to calculate the median or really um, uh, you can calculate the value at any percentile without writing complicated SQL. So again, this is a perfect example of, uh, of using hyperfunctions to simplify the process of analyzing time series data. So I just wanted to highlight that. Uh, and that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or want to learn about time series data, or you specifically want to learn about uh, Timescale DB to store time series data. Uh, I recommend joining the uh, Timescale community. We have a forum 
Uh, we also have a, a, a Slack uh, Slack community with more than 10,000 people. And uh, yeah, thank you for your attention and uh, have a good day.